Pasta is one of those great staple foods that probably everyone has in their pantry, everyone's made it. There's versions of it in almost every culture. Everyone's cooked a bad batch of pasta that's overcooked and mushy or clumped together in a big wad of pasta. But here's some tips to make it come out great every time. When you're cooking pasta, first things first, you wanna start with a big pot of boiling water. If you have a wider bottom, it will heat up a little bit quicker. But the biggest thing you wanna worry about is just making sure you have enough water in the pot so that the pasta can move around freely and that will help it from clumping up. The water will come to a boil faster if you cover the pot with a lid. Some people wanna salt the water while it's cold, thinking that it will help the water boil quicker. Studies show that it doesn't make a huge difference unless you're adding a crazy amount of salt to the water. So it doesn't really matter if you add your salt to the water before it's boiling or afterwards. The biggest point is just make sure that you salt it. If you don't salt the water, then the pasta is gonna taste really bland and just not right. We're gonna use two tablespoons of salt for this amount of water. But don't be afraid to really heavily salt your water. The old folklore is you want it to taste salty like the sea. It seems like a lot, but most of it's gonna go out with the water and only only a minimal amount is gonna actually get into the pasta. When you add your pasta, you wanna get it submerged in the water as quickly as possible, and you also wanna get it moving as quickly as possible. The first minute or two is the most crucial part to make sure that it's not gonna to stick together. So you just wanna make sure that you're getting all the pasta moving, and throughout the cooking process, you're gonna to wanna to do this every few minutes until it's done. It may seem tedious and annoying, but it's better to do it at this point than have a big clump of pasta at the end. Before you drain your pasta, reserve yourself a cup or two of this starchy cooking water. We're gonna add this to our sauce later. It's gonna give it a nice silky texture without thinning it out too much because of all that starch in there. Really, the only way to tell when your pasta is done is to taste it. When the pasta goes in, you wanna set a timer for about two minutes before the pasta should be done according to the box. That's a great time to start checking the pasta to see where you're at. And what we're looking for here is for the pasta to be al dente. Al dente just means to the tooth, which means it still has a little bit of bite in the pasta. It's not completely soft when you bite down. Taking it out when it's al dente and still has that texture to it will keep it from overcooking once you add it to the sauce and it cools down enough for you to eat it. So you wanna drain your pasta and do not rinse your pasta unless you're using it for a cold pasta salad. If you rinse the pasta at this stage, it's just gonna take off all of that extra starch that helps make your sauce really silky and delicious. The longer it sits like this, the more it'll stick together. So immediately after draining, you want to put it into whatever sauce you're gonna have. If you're not sure which sauce to pair with your pasta, a lot of it comes down to personal preference. A good rule of thumb for a long, thin noodle like spaghetti, angel hair, or linguine is to pair it with a lighter oil-based or a light cream sauce. Here's an example of a quick and easy sauce you can make while your pasta is cooking. All you really need is some olive oil, some crushed garlic, a few handfuls of fresh chopped tomatoes. Season those with a little bit of salt and pepper. That's gonna help the tomatoes release more of their juices. Cook those down a little bit, then pour in some white wine and let that reduce to a nice syrupy sauce. And then at this point, you can throw your pasta in. Because of the heat of the sauce in the pan, the pasta's gonna keep cooking for another minute or two. And it's gonna soak up all of that sauce as well, so it's really gonna flavor the noodle in the last minute or two of cooking. At the last minute, you can add some cheese, fresh basil, and a little bit of that pasta water to kind of finish off the sauce and give it a nice silky, creamy texture. And that's it. A fresh sauce like this can take a really basic ingredient like spaghetti and turn it into a really elegant meal quickly, easily, and cheaply. So twist pasta like fusilli, rotini, gemelli, those are great for lighter, smooth sauces like a pesto because the sauce can really cling and get into every nook and cranny of the pasta. So at this point, we can just kind of loosen up the pasta a bit with some of that pasta water, put a few dollops of the pesto sauce as needed on there, and then at that point, you can stir it around, see how much you need, add more pesto if you're crazy like us and really want a lot in there, and you can add a little bit more cheese and pasta water just to finish off the sauce and make it nice and smooth. You can really see in the end just how much of that sauce really soaks up into the pasta and you'll get a great bite of pesto with every bite. For a rich, meaty sauce, something like a ragu or a bolognese, a tube pasta, like a rigatoni, paccheri, penne, all of those are really great for hanging on to a rich, meaty sauce. So add your noodles to the pan, add some pasta water to loosen them up, and then you can spoon in whatever sauce you're using. Stir the pasta to keep it cooking and distribute the sauce really well in the dish. And then at this point, you can add more sauce if you want. And then just to finish off the sauce, you can add some pasta water and some cheese. And then just stir to incorporate it and melt the cheese in the sauce. That's really gonna solidify your dish and make everything kind of come together. Tubes are great because it leaves enough room for some meat and some of those bigger, chunkier ingredients to get inside. All of those are really great for pairing with a big, heavy meat sauce. 
Another less traditional way to cook pasta is the one pot method. And that really just means cooking the pasta in the ingredients for the sauce instead of doing them separately. It's a little bit less traditional, but if you need to get dinner on the table and you don't want a lot of mess, this is a great solution for that. Here's an easy one that'll give you a great result. People won't be able to tell it's a one pot. So first you wanna heat up some olive oil, get it pretty nice and hot, throw in some chicken, some one pot meals, throw everything in at the same time. You know, that works, but also then some things are overcooked, some things are undercooked. This recipe does everything in stages, but it ends up with such a great result that no one will be able to know that it was a one pot. We're gonna brown our protein first with some salt and pepper on a high heat, get a lot of caramelization on the outside, and then take it out and put it back in at the very end. It's gonna give your chicken a lot more flavor, and it's also gonna flavor everything else you add to the pot afterwards. You can add a little bit more oil if you need it, and then you can add your onions and brown those off a little bit, and then you can add mushrooms and garlic. And at this point, any dry seasonings you wanna add, you can add them now. We used thyme, paprika, salt, and pepper. We wanna do that before we add the liquid so we can toast the spices slightly, and that's gonna help release more flavor before we add the liquid. We're gonna add some chicken broth and cream, bring that to a boil, and then we can add our pasta. Shorter or smaller pasta is great for a one pot just because it's easy to stir from the get-go. You have so many ingredients in there and there's not as much liquid as you'd normally use. You want to stir every minute or two just to ensure that all the pasta is cooking evenly and that nothing's sticking. It should take about the same time as cooking in normal water. Sometimes it takes a little bit longer, especially if your liquid isn't at a total boil when you start. But again, the best way to check it is by tasting it. So about a few minutes before all the liquid is dissolved, you want to taste your pasta, make sure that it's pretty much al dente. And at this point, we're gonna add some fresh spinach to it, let that wilt down, and add our chicken back in to finish cooking and get coated in all that nice sauce. As always, adding some Parmesan cheese will help thicken everything up, that'll help finish off the sauce, then bring it all together. One pots are great because not only are they mess-free, you have a ton of flavor built into them. Because you're boiling the pasta in this really rich, flavorful broth, you're building a ton of flavor really quickly. No one will be able to tell it's a one pot pasta. Pasta is one of those foods that you can never get sick of. It's so versatile, it's cheap, it's filling, it's a comfort food. If you do it right, it can be part of a nutritious diet. And there's so many different ways to make it, you'll never get bored with it. And once you get the fundamentals down, you'll only elevate your dish every time. Like, no one will ever be upset if you put a bowl of pasta in front of their face. That's true, that's very accurate. Like, I wish people liked me the way that they love pasta. <laughs>